grown. That's a good sign. And we got a muskrat. So, uh, look at how he's caught. He's not even caught in the trap itself. He just got his fur caught in the spring right there. That's the only thing holding him. All right, I'm just going to do a uh, quick video here on uh, my technique for, for skinning out muskrats. So, uh, I always hang up my muskrats when I skin them. I know there's a lot of different techniques. Some guys do it on a table with a couple nails, and a lot of guys, uh, you know, probably more experienced and can definitely do it faster than me, but uh, this is just the way I've done it since I was, since I was a kid. So uh, I've got a few of these ropes hung up in the garage uh, with just a loop on the end, and then I just form a... A uh, girth hitch and then I put the uh, the hind leg and I always use the left hind leg uh, and I do it the same way for raccoon and otter and fox and coyote uh, just hang them up on this loop right here and uh, gonna want to use a little bit smaller blade something uh, kind of pointy and sharp you know <clears throat> and uh, again this is just the way I do it so if you have your own technique that's fine but I I cut around the uh, this hind leg out here, the right hind leg. Make make my cut there, and then I go a straight line from that all the way up to the uh, the tail right here, staying right along the line. You can see where the fur changes colors a little bit in different length right there. I just kind of follow that line up. up there to the tail and then I go from the tail up to the uh, other ankle and then once I'm there I just make another cut all the way around the foot and then just make a, a couple little cuts to uh, to get it started the skin is pretty thin and unforgiving, so if this is your uh, first time skinning, you know, you might make a couple little nicks, but uh, happens to everybody. But after that, I, I set the knife down for a bit and I just use my fingers and kind of pull it and separate the, uh, the hide from, from the carcass. Um, you're less likely to uh, damage the hide with your, with your fingers, although you can. I remember when my, my dad was teaching me to skin muskrats, I was about, I was probably about 10 or 11. And he's like, you'll never, you'll never put a hole in the hide with your thumb. And uh, I don't know, I guess being a really strong 11 year old, I <clears throat> then put my thumb right through the hide. I think I was maybe kind of on purpose. Okay, so I got the leg, that leg all separate. I did all that with just my thumb. And you can pull it down here a little bit farther on the back, uh, but you're gonna have to make another cut right here where the uh, where the belly fur is attached to the tail, kind of near the vent. So that's all that's uh, attaching right there. So just make a little cut. And uh, you don't want to uh, you don't want to pull too hard right here because the, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to rip open the abdominal cavity. So I'm just making little tiny cuts right there. Careful not to cut the fur. And then I'm going to kind of hold the abdominal uh, muscles there and then just kind of gently uh, separate that. It comes apart pretty easy. Uh, and one thing I, I should have mentioned is you want the fur to be pretty dry before you're uh, skinning. Uh, at least before you you board it you don't want to board it when it's when it's wet at all you want it nice and and dry it makes a difference for the uh the fur buyer if you're just sending it to get tan it doesn't matter okay so you can just like i said just continue to separate there if you get if it gets hung up on that membrane just uh you know you can gently make a little cut right there where it's attached 
but I'm not using my knife all that much on, on muskrats. And like I said, if you just yank down really hard, it's going to rip open the abdominal cavity and the intestines are going to kind of spill out, which I mean, you know, that that's going to happen once in a while, but it gets a little bit messy. So try to keep a little bit neater. Okay. I'm getting down here towards the, uh, the chest area past the rib cage. So I'm going to get up here to the, to the front legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this here. So I'm not ripping the body and I'm just going to kind of gently pull down. Probably it'll, it'll pull right past the elbow. See, there's an the elbow there, elbow there. And notice I'm not using my knife for, for that part. And now I'm going to put my thumb right through the, uh, the arm and make a little hole right there. And once you get it there, uh, you're just going to pull the front foot off. Some guys cut the front feet off or cut around the front feet. And, and you can, but it's not necessary because you can just pull that right off and it's going to rip right there at the, at the front foot naturally. So you don't have to make those extra cuts. And then just do the same thing on the other side. Just poke my finger through and you just pull that and just take the arm right out of the sleeve. All right, so once I'm here, getting to the head now, I'm just gonna pull down just a little bit more. And now we have the, uh, the ears. So the first time, uh, first few times you do this, you might mess up a little bit if you don't know where they're at, but I know that there's an ear right there. So I'm just gonna cut straight across. I got that, that ear and the other one is right there. Okay, I've got that ear. Now I'm just gonna trim around on the cheeks a little bit here. Gently, not, not cutting the hide. Now, if you do cut the hide up by the head, that's not really gonna lower the value. What you don't wanna do is cut it anywhere on the back or the belly. Okay, the next thing is the eyeballs. Uh, and you can see it starts to get a little bit white right there. So just don't cut down too deep. If I cut right there, I'm gonna cut the height. I'm just gonna cut up above where the eye is and you can see one eye right there. And then that white right there is the other eye. So we got both of the eyes and cut around the, the cheeks a little bit more. And we got uh, the lower jaw off and now all that's left is continuing around those upper incisors. And then we get it down here to the nose and the hide is off. Okay, so for fleshing these, uh, probably the biggest mistake guys make is, is over fleshing them. You, you just really don't have to do very much at all. Uh, I have a little a board set up here next to my main fleshing beam that I just use for, for muskrats. And uh, what I use is just an old uh, hog scraper. So, I mean, if you don't have one, uh, they're only a couple bucks or you can just buy, I mean, any other little scraper. Or a lot of guys just use an old... Uh, tablespoon you don't want it to be too sharp and uh not not much fat on these guys and you and you don't want to take off all of all of the fat or the this red membrane here is called the saddle you want to leave that on there so we got a little bit of meat up here on the on the cheek just gently uh scrape that off and then right here here's the front uh front leg so right under the front leg you're going to have a little pocket of fat right there i'm scraping off the white fat not the red uh meaty saddle part and then down here we got a little bit of fat as well that's it for that side and then we'll just do the same on the other side a little meat on the cheek a little pocket of fat on the arm That's it. So you don't want to, uh, don't feel a need to get every little bit of fat off of here because these are going to, uh, that, that'll dry out. That'll just kind of you know, melt away as it's drying. Only takes a couple days for these uh, to dry out. I keep the garage usually right around 50 degrees. You probably don't want to go much warmer than about 60 if possible. So then uh, you want to get yourself a few of these wire stretchers probably. Some guys use wood. And that's fine, but uh, the fur buyers 
prefer the uh, the wire stretchers just for uniformity. And then uh, you just slip that on there, get it centered up, and uh, get you a couple a couple close pins, close pins, because you want to bring the nose up over the top of the stretcher. Throw a close pin up on top to uh, to hold it there. Then uh, here's one thing I do probably different than other people, and this is maybe not the right way. The, the books say to put the, the hooks of the stretcher on the fur side, but I've been doing it on the skin side since I was a kid, and I don't know if that's, I don't know why it's because it's I'm left-handed or what, but I just put those hooks on the left side. You can squeeze in the, the stretcher a little bit as you're pulling down on that hook. Get it kind of tight. And then on the belly side though, you can't pull this tight because the skin is really uh, really thin right there and you're, you'll rip through it. So just put that hook in there and get it snug. Sorry, my heater just kicked on. And then I take two more close pins, but I use the old, uh, the old kind here. And then I just pull down on the side, kind of stretch that down a little bit, and uh, put my uh, close pin on there, slide it down. And what that's doing is you're just getting another inch or so of, of length on the on the hide. And that's it. That's our uh, muskrat skin flushed and stretched. Now just hang this up. Uh, like I said, about I usually leave mine there about five days, but they're they're dry after two, two or three. Alrighty, thanks for watching.